I literally just damaged a customer's property. Let me show you how. What is going on everybody? It is Will Kelly with Military Lawn Cuts. We've done 630,000 in annual revenue last year and just opened up our second location. We're running a dual GM kind of position right now. That's what I'm gonna be doing and I'm gonna be taking you along for the ride. This is the daily vlog with Military Lawn Cuts. Here at our Military Lawn Cuts headquarters where we have our team meetings back here and we put some good sayings on the whiteboard back here. And today we are shooting our very first ever podcast. And let me show you where here. Here is where it's going to be. There is not much in this room, but some camera gear. And behind me, we have a setup. We're gonna be doing a podcast today with Sam and Troops Mowing. And then after that, we're going to jump out in the field and we've got about 10 properties that we're gonna be doing today uh, from mowing to eight week reoccurring bush and bed services. And we are gonna take you guys along for the ride. And then we also break down what it would cost for uh, payroll over like three or four months of winter where if everything went bad, we could still at least do payroll and then have whatever else income just cover expenses and just break even. All righty, Sam is just leaving. He is going up to Oklahoma and we are gonna go out and mow some lawns. Let's get after it. All right, let me go ahead and close up the shop here, AKA the media room. All righty guys, we are just now leaving the headquarters of Military Lawn Cuts. And um, yeah, great podcast this morning. Thank you, Sam, with Troops Mowing for coming out and breaking in the HQ with its first ever podcast. Absolutely crushed it. I think it's going to be bring a lot of great value to our community. So definitely thank you for coming out. And just all around, good dude. Uh, good, genuine uh, person. So uh, if you guys want to get advice or ask any questions to Sam, definitely reach out to him. He's with Troops Mowing and he's down in Hutto, Texas, not too far from us. First property right here. And I think I was here last week, potentially, but we'll see. So nice and green lawn because all of our clients are on our fertilizer weed control. But from the truck, what I saw here, let me see if I can find it for you guys, is some of that Dallas grass coming in. Look at this. So let's see this? These thick blades here. This is no good. We do not want this stuff in our lawns. It is very invasive and it is very aggressive and it's very difficult to treat. What we use to treat that stuff is called Tribute Total, okay? The bottle for it is $400 dollars and you don't get a lot of product with it we go through it pretty quickly because if we come across a lawn that's really bad with this stuff normally one treatment on the dallas grass doesn't kill it it needs multiple treatments so that is the problem that we that we face out here in texas it's called dallas grass and we almost in dallas we're like 45 minutes away i don't know maybe there's some correlation to why it's called that but all right guys let's get mowing All right, I'm gonna give you a quick sneak peek of what it looks like to have a nice, green, healthy cut lawn. As you can see here, see these clippings? We're only taking off about a quarter of an inch, all right? This is all we want. 
So we're mowing weekly. Everybody asks, what mow height do we put our mowers? I'll show you. A two and a half, right there. That's three, that's two, two and a half. Back here, this is number two. The next one is a half. We mow on a double two and a half. This is one of our healthier lawns. As you can see, it's a nice dark green. And when I just cut this, it has that dark green color. That's what we want. We're gonna do the same over here. I'll show you guys the finished product here in a second. Best part about the ramp or the green touch trailer racks is all, all this stuff locks. So anytime you go to a gas station or doing anything where you're away from the truck, you get to lock these things. So that way nobody comes by and takes them. All right, so I just got done mowing and I wanna show you guys this. Again, if you look at the concrete, there is not much getting trimmed because this is all weekly mowing customers, okay? Now, if you look over here, got some nice straight mow lines. Last week, we cut left to right. This week, we're changing up the patterns. Now, there's two, now there's the main reason why we do that is because we don't want ruts getting created in the lawn. Okay, that's why we changed up the mow pattern. And in the backyard, instead of going north and south, east or west, I actually went on a diagonal. And sometimes I'll cut this way, but I'll switch it up and go this way. And so that way the grass is getting different kind of variations of how it's getting cut. And it's not getting cut all the same. Now, the reason why we raise our mow heights to two and a half inches. So as you can see down here, it's got a nice, nice lip to it. The reason why we do that is because in Texas, next week it's going to be in the hundreds, the triple digits from, let's see, from that guy right there. That guy comes down here when it's 100 degrees and if it's cut too short, it will damage the lawn and it'll burn it and it'll dry it out. But if we keep it nice and tall, the root system gets nice and deep on the grass and we can keep that nice green lush grass as long as the customer is watering. So we're gonna use this as a learning point here. So you see this uh, bright yellow area in a lawn. So this signifies that it is a stressed lawn, okay? So um, here's my diagonal lines. I don't know if you can see them. All right, so what does this mean? Well, as a, as a lawn care specialist, you need to understand and break down what causes stresses in the lawn. From this one in particular, because I was here last week, I've got a little bit of inside scoop. My theory is that it is from sprinkler heads that are not getting this area. Now, again, this is why we don't cut it real short and this is why the lawn needs water. Otherwise, it's going to look dead like this when uh, that vitamin D comes down and uh, gives a lot of it, okay? So let me get my glove off here. First thing you wanna do, you wanna jump down here do a little, do a little uh, physical check here with your finger. Okay. All right. So this is actually interesting because the ground is actually pretty moist. So maybe it's not actually from the sprinkler system. Okay. Um, some other things that could be causing that, if that's the case, if it's moist, is this might be an area where the dog urines. Hopefully not because I just freaking touched it with my fingers generally you get these little yellow urine spots by the porch because the dog will come out 
do its little duty and uh, dog urine is very acidic so it will create things like this so um, that would be my theory is that this potentially might be where the where the dog uh, urinates if that is not the case then there could be uh, this could be a disease that's forming so the thing about sorry I got wacky hair the thing about diseases in lawns are it can only grow where there's moisture so because I went, I got down on one knee and uh, did a temperature check or physical check on it and it was moist, that actually does signify to me that it probably might be a disease. And the only reason why I say that too is it's, it was kind of curved, almost like um, a yellow spot or a brown patch or something, which I don't think it's brown patch, but this is... It's, it's basically, we're like a, a doctor trying to diagnose something, okay? It's not always black and white that you can pinpoint something. So it may need a fungicide or it might be just dog urine spots. But these are some of the type of things that we run into out here of diagnosing lawn problems so we can help the customer. And right there next to that first mailbox is where my mom got pulled over by handing out flyers in this neighborhood because she didn't have a solicitor's badge and caught a $400 fine. Now this was in my beginning phases of the first location trying to uh, get our name out. And yeah, it was kind of upsetting that that happened. Uh, the police officer, I fully, absolutely, wholeheartedly respect police officers um, however, this one in particular was, I think, having a little bit of a rough day. And so when I went and tried to confront him and just ask, uh, what, like, uh, we were told that as long as we weren't putting the flyer, uh, or as long as we weren't ringing the doorbell, that you could just leave the flyer on the door, like a door hanger or like underneath the mat or something like that. But I guess apparently that is not the case. And I was trying to get educated on the situation. So uh, when I got out and went out and tried to confront him and say, hey, like, um, you know, I, I respect you and all this. I, I'm just, I am an ignorant and I don't understand. We were told by the city as long as we weren't. Ringing. And he was not having it. He was like, who are you? Why are you coming up? I said, this is, you know, this is my mom. Like she, she's helping me. Uh, hand out flyers to grow our lawn care business and yeah he just was having a very rough day that day so um hopefully his day got better after that but yeah that's that's where uh, my mom got a 400 hundred dollar fine which i told her i am going to pay for this because um you don't deserve that you're helping me out and because my mom's a loving mom she was like no you're not gonna you're not pay for it and i'm like yes i am and uh Long story short, that happened. So make sure that you guys are following the rules, getting solicitor's badge. Um, if there is a no solicitor sign, even if you have a badge, do not put a door hanger or flyer on the door. Hopefully you, that mitigates someone else from getting in trouble. All right, property two and three, right next door to each other, baby. That's called route density. This corner, and this corner. So what do I do? I park my truck right in between them for fastest efficiency. Make sure you guys are drinking water out here because it's hot.
You always want to go above and beyond for the customer. Oh my goodness. Get a whiff of beer, huh? Got a Slim Jim and a Bud Ice. I literally just damaged a customer's property. Let me show you how. All right, so as I was edging down here with the edger blade, as I should or should be doing, so we came across a drip line piece that was is too close to the concrete. And as you can see, the edger blade just sliced right through that thing. So we are going to have to ring the doorbell and let the customer know because this is exactly what may happen if we're out on a property. Let me show you how we handle this. All right, so let me walk you through the protocol. Ring the doorbell, communicate to the customer on the property. Do not leave the property because that's a, not a good look. Okay, if there's a damaged sprinkler head or drip line such as, such as this, ring the doorbell first, let the customer know if they're not home, put in the job notes, take a picture, add it to service autopilot, and our office will reach out to the customer and let them know. Now in this scenario, um, I'm gonna go ahead and ring the doorbell now, and we're gonna go and see if they're home. So let me give you the verdict on the damage case. The customer was not home. I rang the doorbell and there was no answer. And so that's gonna happen sometimes. They're probably out at work, but it's really important that we're proactive about it. So what I did is I put the, I took a picture, put it in the notes and just let our office manager know that we need to reach out to them, communicate that there was damage on the property and figure out what we need to do to fix it. In this particular situation, it is 1000% my fault for hitting it with the edger. However, the builder is not necessarily, uh, the, that drip line is not designed to be installed right next to the concrete. And so I think their uh, parameters is within like three or four inches from concrete. And then like it can go underneath the soil and stuff like that. So what we have found, if we ever, if you guys ever run into this situation, so what we do, what we're gonna do is our office manager is gonna reach out and see if the customer can get a hold of the builder to see if they can come out under the warranty because this is a new build area, because the drip line really wasn't installed properly. Properly, it wasn't installed three to four inches off of the concrete. So we're gonna see if the customer can get that fixed and replaced under the warranty. So that way we don't necessarily, uh, it doesn't have to come out of our pocket. Now, in a scenario where the builder will not uh, warranty that out, which they have in the past, they, they will come out and fix that. But let's just say the customer's passed their warranty phase or whatever, obviously we're gonna get it fixed for the customer, make sure that they're taken care of and move forward and hopefully retain them as a customer because we're proactive about communicating damage. I wanted to show you guys this real quick. So uh, this is a good telltale sign of a customer that needs to water more. Um, it just doesn't have that like really dark green color. It's just really kind of like light and crunchy when you step on it, it's a little crunchy. So we just gotta probably recommend to the customer to increase the watering rec recommendation. Alrighty guys, here you have it. My first overgrown lawn this season. Check it out. Woo! And it's not even that bad. Looks like all weeds and it's really, really dry. Let's get after it. This is a first time cut for a new customer. So even though it's overgrown, we gotta make sure that we're doing a really good quality cut on this first visit. Take a look, see what we're looking at. See how it looks. Ooh, it's a brand new lawn. 
although it needs some weed control, maybe some aer aeration, some fertilizer, and some good watering, it will be there. But that'll take a few weeks, maybe a couple months. And then as you can see, we cleaned up all over here. As you missed a spot there, but we got it all cleaned up. So I think it's gonna get up to 94 today. This will kind of show you an example of uh, how hot it is. But look, if, uh, if this is entertaining or helpful or educational for you, how about a like, uh, a thumbs up for the video? Um, that's gonna be a wrap for today. I'm gonna crush these next few properties and uh, we'll see you guys next time. Like and subscribe.